What's going on everybody? Power Metal Ranger here for a album thoughts video. As you all know, yesterday, September 17th, we had five albums drop. Um, I already did an album thoughts video for uh, Brainstorm, Wall of Skulls. Check that out if you haven't already. Um, and today, I'm going to be giving my thoughts on the new Wisdom album called Of Wonders and Wars. So that'll be exciting. Uh, I did a reaction to uh, their single Notre Dame um, already, so you can check that out. But uh, today also, I'm going to be checking out or, or giving my thoughts on this album with a guest. The King of Pikmin is his name, and he has a gaming channel. Uh, check that out if you're into gaming. I'm going to put the link in the description. But he is a fellow... Um, Ranger of all things power metal. I mean, who isn't? But he's actually kind of like my right-hand ranger, if you will. We started our power metal journey together at the same time, and we haven't looked back since. So we're always sharing thoughts on the latest stuff and um, the music and power metal and, and all those kind of things. So I'm super happy to have him here. And with all of that being said... Let's bring him up on the super advanced, futuristic, power metal, digital screen. Should we do it? Let's do it. Rangers, go. The King of Pikmin, welcome. Oh, oh, how's it going? I, I started to just, see there. <laughs> started to just beam you in out of nowhere. But, yeah, uh, I, was, I was playing. I was playing some games, you know, for my channel. You, I, you didn't warn me. You just put me in. I, I, I said away. he plays games, and he, 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 I, he I was playing, playing some games. games. So what, what can I you apologize. say? And I bet you he was playing games whilst listening to Power Metal. Oftentimes I am. Well, you were right. How about that? Once again, I'm sorry to just bring you in here, you know, uh, uh, unannounced. But um, at the click of a button, I can just beam anybody in. So. Pretty Welcome. impressive. Welcome. I mean, it's all good. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. He's my brother, by the way. Next time. And um, so that's why I put up with him. Uh, you know, family. Am I right? Huh? I'm You're here right. all day. Um, so, wisdom of wonders and wars. What do you think about that album cover? By the way, I guess we'll start with that. The aesthetics, yeah. you know. Yeah, might as well. So for me. It's pretty good. I, in the background, you can see a brethren moon getting absolutely decimated by a pyramid. So points in my book for that. See a gamer, true at heart. Any of you who don't know the reference, brethren moon from Dead Space uh, franchise, um, which I guess we'll plug. They're doing a, a remake of the first one um, coming out soon at some point. So I know this guy is looking super forward oh. to that. Oh yeah. But anyway, this is a wisdom video. So let's shed some wisdom uh, or do our best. But uh, any other thoughts on the cover? I mean, all, all in all, it's very just passable, in my opinion, like joking aside. It's pretty neat having like the UFOs and stuff and the Sphinx has like technology. So it's unique. That is that going for it. Yeah, there's definitely a lot going on. Um, like you said, the UFOs and, and the technology, it looks like in the, the Sphinx and some dude riding the ostrich in the bottom right, it looks like. Um, yeah. And, and like you camel, said, but... or camel, or you know, whatever. But I mean, a camel is just an ostrich without the feathers, pretty much. So and extra legs. And extra legs, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I see guess. where you're going with that. It's a yeah. Yeah. Well, you're right. We won't go too far down the uh, ostrich hole on that one. Um, but anyway, so yeah, it's a pretty cool cover. I, I like how like in the space is the, the galaxy. There's like a couple different um, planets or moons. But anyhow, so. Did you listen to the album? I did, and I don't know how honest you want me to be. I, I loved it. I ended up loving it. But when I first listened to it, for whatever reason, it didn't really jive with me. Um, I, I don't know how to explain that, but I listened to it a second time, and I love it now. Um, a third time? I, I thought you said also well, you listened to it pretty Oh, the second time is when the you second realized time you I, loved it. Yeah, so I did listen to it a third time as well this morning. But yesterday, I listened to it a second time just to give it another chance, and that's when I... Decide, like I decided I really liked it. Yeah. And then I did listen to it a third time, yes. But I was already pretty affirmed that I enjoyed it by then. 
Yeah, you know, that can happen sometimes with anything, really. You know, sometimes you're not in the right headspace, uh, perhaps, per se, you know, to enjoy something the first time around or, or for whatever it is. But then you give it a little time and you absorb it better. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's definitely happened to me in the past. I, I, you know, have not been sure about something. And then on subsequent, you know, listens or whatnot, I'm like, oh, you know what? I really am appreciating this. So, but anyway, I guess we'll, we'll get down to it. Um, it's 10 tracks on this album and it comes in at just about an hour. So, yeah, that, I mean... Like I said in, in the brainstorm video, I like around 45 to 50, or 55 maybe minutes, kind of the sweet spot, but an hour is still good. You know, I just sometimes worry about something overstaying as welcome. Um, but um, this comes in at a, at a solid time. I, I, I will say that. It had, how did you feel? Did you feel that it dragged on or that it ended too abrupt or did you feel like it was a, the proper time? I feel like it was a decent time maybe a little long for me i think a lot of the songs are longer than like six minutes so true some of the songs did feel like they went on a little long but i mean it doesn't really take any points off of it for me personally I hear you. all right so let's start digging in shall we so track one we have wanderers and dreamers um personally the first song I have a complicated relationship with, to be 100% honest. I like it, um, but as, as the opening track, it, it, it's got several different parts to it. And I, I feel like you're not quite sure where this album's going to go yet. You just base off that first song, because like I said, it's kind of, I don't want to say disjointed by any stretch, but... It's just got multiple things going on, multiple parts, so it's hard to get the vibe of, you know, where it's going to continue from there. So I don't know if a different song maybe should have been used first or not, but either way, it's still a solid song, and it sticks in your head. You know, before we start recording, we are actually, like, singing the tune from the song, so it's a good song. It's just, that's why I said I have a complicated relationship with it, because I feel like it doesn't give the best impression right off the rip of what you're going to be getting into. Um, do you have any comments on the first song? I pretty much fully agree with you because I think that's part of why, I know it's not really fair to me, but when I heard the first song, that first time I listened to the album, I think maybe it didn't, I didn't really, you know, get into it so much. So the rest of the album kind of suffered for it. Yeah. It kind of gets my, you off on the wrong foot almost. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like it did. But that being said, I ended up loving the song. I, like you said, we were singing it before. Yeah. <laughs> it really we were sticks singing. with you. Yeah. It does really so. stick with you. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's an interesting song. I, I feel like you have to give that one a little time to, uh, to ripen Arinate. or arinate, uh, forgive me. He's also a, a fancy uh, connoisseur of all things extravagant um so for forgive me um i'll have to twirl my mustache a little bit before he even speaks to me most of the time so yeah get a cup of tea with the pinky the pinkies out. yeah so uh so yes so if you're listening to this album give that first song if you're not jiving with it right off the rip just give it a little time um but then it when it drops into the second track which is child of damnation um, Whoa! I know, I know language, but um, <laughs> I hope uh, you know no children are listening. You know, they just plug their ears because I I've just got sailor mouth over here, uh, and that sounds pretty filthy. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you did it to yourself. <laughs> I, I did. Sometimes <laughs> I didn't I, help with that. Sometimes one. I just walk right into stuff, um, mouth agape and everything. Um, just stop. Move so, on. <laughs> child of damnation. Um, I feel like it, it really gets going, like the tempo starts moving, and that song, more than any other song on here, really gave me old school Nightwish vibes. Um, uh, the Tarja days, or tar Tarja, forgive me, um, days. Um, I just really got that vibe. And so it, it's got that, that moving speed, that high tempo with the guitars and stuff, but then also the orchestra, uh, orchestra orchestral stuff, and the choirs. Um, what do you think? This one really, this was probably one of my favorites on the album. It's got like the tempo, the faster tempo. 
and her voice i i was gonna say it in the first song too her voice is just ridiculous um and then this it's really highlighted in this song and i really like the instrumentals and stuff as well i'm always a sucker for orchestral sounds so yeah no i agree with you you know that song i feel like the song's kind of like a journey it feels like a voyage almost um it just moves you along with all the the bombast and, and, and the instruments so really good um here we start getting into the sweet spot of the album in my opinion um track three stonehenge um oh man i love this song so much um it's got such a good melody such a great melody the bu- they bust out some brass instruments right off the rip um great pieces it's got the little um I don't know what that it's, it's like a little flute or where it's like like in the background um it just it, it just kind of has like a magical sound to it um stonehenge is one of my favorite uh, off the album any comments on stonehenge i mean you're gonna hear it a lot from me but i'm a sucker for orchestral stuff and brass uh, especially brass i i don't know what it is but this one especially even more so than the second track felt like a journey to me you know yeah as, as dumb as it's gonna sound it sounds like almost like a hero it starts out you know like on a journey and then by the end of the song he finishes it so yeah no i definitely agree with you um the fourth track it, it, it's tough for me three four and five are all kind of there and my favorites but the fourth track um ariadne the way this one starts oh Oh, it had me right off the beginning here because it's got the chants, like the, the 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 choir with her singing and the chants, like boom, boom, like right up in, in the beginning, and then that kind of tapers, and then like the cello comes in, like the boom, 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 and, and, oh, and it just goes from there, and it's just the melody and her voice, and again the orchestral um, sound, it's just wonderful. The tune, it's just great. I mean, you pretty much covered it all. I mean, the cello, and then it kicks back in more with choir. It, It's just a beautiful song, really. I don't really have much more to add. Yeah, no, I hear you. And a lot of these songs, they have various like movements like within them, almost like they're like classical pieces to a degree. Which, uh, which I'm also you're kind also of a sucker fan, for. So. so this kind of, I don't know why I didn't like it the first time, because it checks almost all my boxes, it really, to yeah. be honest with you. That's why I wanted to have you on here, because I was like, this this is like right, right. down your alley. This is the it kind really of thing is. that is your bread and butter. Um, um, yeah. But yeah, it's like, I feel like each song has like different movements, because there'll be slow down parts that get kind of softer, more like melodic, and then it gets big again, like with the bombast, and then it'll like maybe speed up. It's just, like I said, it shares a lot in, in common, in my opinion, to like classical compositions, which makes sense with all the uh, or- orchestral arrangements going on in this thing. Um, it does, which can be difficult to have so much in one song and not have it just sound like chaos, but they did a good job. It's true. It's true. Um, track five, Touch the Sky. Love this song. It, it's it, it, it's one of those that you just listen to and it, it's just got such a good sound a good melody and this song i would say is the closest um to uh like a, a traditional ballad type it, it's not like as quick or anything it, it's more of like a, a ballad um and it's a solid top-notch ballad in my opinion um her voice just really carries it i agree I agree completely. It was on the slower side, which is kind of good because it's like right in the middle of the album. So it gives yeah. you a kind of respite, you know, from the faster stuff because it does pick up again. But this was a this was a very nice song to listen to for sure. Yeah, I love the same way too because track six, War, it kind of, because the song kind of goes down and then War starts off very soft with kind of like a, just like a soft kind of tune to it. And you're, you know, you're thinking like war, like, oh, I thought this was gonna, but it starts off very soft, kind of like it just segues right from the previous one. But then it just, boom, boom, it just starts hitting you with the bombast and like with the guitar riffs, the heavy guitar riffs, um, and, and it just gets going. That, that This one's like a heavy hitting one, you know, it just hits you. And it, it... Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's trying to get you back in the mood of the fast pace and, you know, more bombastic stuff. Yeah, and it's solid. It's solid. Like, it's a, a chant worthy kind of song. Um, track seven, Metropolis Lights. Personally, this is my least favorite from the album. The only one 
that I would say that I'm not quite a fan of. Um, it was a little more of a standard fare, in my opinion, like a standard symphonic metal. It, it kind of lacked um, th a lot of the charm um, of the rest of the songs. Um, like it just, it didn't, it just didn't have the same feel to me. Um, that's just my personal take on it. Um, do you have any thoughts on that song? I I could kind of see where you're coming from, saying that it's you know more standard fare, um, but I didn't really. I still liked it pretty much just as much as the rest of the. There's one. There's a song later that was probably my least favorite. Oh okay. Um, but I, this one wasn't my least favorite. I I enjoyed this one a decent amount. I, mean, right. I enjoyed them all a decent amount. But, right. Um, track eight, um, pyramids. This one I thought had the most like magical quality to it, like or like a uh, majestic quality. It's almost, you know, the name of the album is of wonders and war. So, you know, they have a song on here called War, and so if wonders, the wonders part had to be a song, I would kind of say it's this, this song, the pyramids. Because it almost feels like they want you to, to be standing there and behold this, you know, monument that's withstood such time, you know, um, you know, these, these pyramids. And it just kind of had a, a big, grandiose feel to me um, that kind of gave me that sense of, um, uh, again, just like grandness, you know, it just kind of had a magical or majestic um, quality to it. And that it really came through the song um, and, and the melody is, is wonderful. And again, the orchestra, it, that, that's how I feel about this track. No, I agree. I mean, that's, I didn't think about it that way, you know, having war on the song and this would be like the wonders essentially, but I imagine this is the song that's playing while the pyramids blasting the brethren moon, you know, it's oh. like wonderful to behold. Well, yeah, well I don't know if that, you know, maybe it starts out that way. And as the beams go in, then it becomes war. You know, just before like right. the UFO is just or the Brethren Moon's obliterated, but well, this one starts out a little quick, so I like to think the beam blasted, and while the debris falling, they're all like, "Whoa!" True, you know, watching it. True, as it comes I bet you that's exactly what the band was that's thinking. What thinking. That's what yeah. they were thinking. You know, they yeah. they played Dead Space Three, and they were like these Brethren Moons, and they said we 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 aren't too keen on this storyline where they went with this in this game. So we are going to make an album and have a song specifically and have it relate to the cover and have the Brethren Moons get blasted. So they there you have it. it. From the King of Pikmin himself has noticed this. So I do my best. Hey, uh, track 10, the final collapse. This song I thought was really cool because I felt like it was the culmination of um, the rest of the album thus far. Like, I felt like it contained pieces or elements from everything that's come before it. Like, it had the more somber moments. It had the, the quick and, you know, speedy tempo moments. It had the majestic moments. It had the bombastic moments, the choir moments. I just felt like it had, a, like, like I said, like, everything just kind of culminated to this song and it was kind of an amalgam of what came before it and i thought it was kind of cool and kind of like an epic um style in my opinion um what do you think about that one this is the one that was probably my least favorite oh, really to be honest uh but that being said i do still really enjoy it honestly it's just this one is kind of how i would describe how you described um which one was it that you the first you song hear? The Metropolis Lights, I think, was your oh, least favorite. Where, where I thought it was standard. Where fare. you thought it was kind of standard. This one felt kind of standard oh. fare to me, or not even so much standard fare, but they tried doing like the somber moments, the bombastic moments, but it didn't flow as well as like okay. Stonehenge. Like to I me, see. it just kind of seemed like. You felt like there was too much going on and it didn't blend together as well as, as yeah. those kind of movements did on other tracks. Yeah, for me personally. So this one was probably my least favorite. It's still a good song. I'm not saying it's bad by any means because I enjoy it, but probably the lesser of mine okay um and then track 10 notre dame which doesn't need too much comment um if you want my full reaction to that i did a reaction to that single when it came out um you know it's not like i, I dislike the song you'll see my reaction spoilers but 
I did like this song, but I, I had a couple little qualms with it. But with that being said, as part of the album and hearing it a couple more times, it's really grown on me. And I do think it's a solid way to close out the album because it feels kind of like an emotional kind of song. Um, and it leaves you with like a message. And again, you know, the song is the, the albums of wonders and war and um, with the Notre Dame fire, you know, I mean, it's feel the song. I feel like they're saying that this is a wonder that is now gone in, in so many works that were inside are gone forever. Um, so you can tell it was, special to them to do this song, especially to release it as the single and show the 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 cityscape or whatnot. So I, I'm definitely cool with it. I think it was a great way to end um, the album. I and, agree. Very good end cap to the album. Like you said, more emotional. And when I watched your reaction to this song, I love this song. I still love this song. So um it's one of my favorites on the album honestly okay. for me personally and it does feel like they're more invested in it. i mean as far as i know it's the only one they did a video for so far it so is i think I that think showcases true. that it's important to them that yeah. they chose this one you know so yeah i thought it was a really good way to end it like you said yeah all right so for like general overviews um i don't know if you want to go first just uh, final thoughts on, on the, the album as a whole I feel like pretty much I ended up, ended up loving it. I kind of already went over my whole thing with the album. Like I started, didn't like it right away. So if you don't like it off the bat, give it a second chance maybe because um, it's probably one of my favorite albums in recent memory and I didn't like it at first, which is weird because it checks all my boxes. <laughs> so all in all, I love the album. I'm going to keep them on my radar for sure. Uh, one thing I noticed, I think they have four albums that precede this one, so they have a discography that you can go back to and check out if you're into this. Um, my final thoughts, um, it's just, musically, I think this is an absolute marvel. Like, the orchestral arrangements, the musical arrangements, ah, absolutely exquisite. Like, truly, like, you know, I'm sitting there listening, and it's rare, it's in my opinion, for a band to pull off that style so well. Um, I know one master of the genre, going again back to Nightwish, but uh, uh, Thomas Holopainen is a mar uh, that's his thing. Like, he puts together these arrangements and pieces that are just incredible. Um, but I feel like they have really pulled off something special here with, with the arrangements. Um, it's just such, it's magical and it's bombastic and it's, it's just amazing to listen to. Um, and on top of that, her vocals, I mean, I was just blown away every time. I think I, I hate saying I'm a sucker all the time, but I'm a sucker for really good, you know, like operatic, operatic vocals. Like that junk just is ridiculous to me. So, just hearing her alone makes the album worth it, you know? Because even the first time I listened to it, I thought the music was lackluster, which is not true. But the vocals I still loved. But I was like, she's kind of held down by the music. But I was <laughs> completely incorrect. Let me say that right now. <laughs> yeah, I was completely incorrect. Don't think that I'm saying that that's true. I was completely incorrect. But her vocals are just obscene yeah they're absolutely fantastic you don't get too many of the operatic styles of course you have Tadia Turin and um uh, what's her name I don't know from Exandria she has some of the operatic style um you don't get it too often and but when you do and that they're like really good it just sticks with you I and like she was Atlantis fantastic too. vision visions of Atlantis uh, another uh, her, her vocals her vocals um I don't remember her name. I could be wrong, but back back when we would listen to Visions of Atlantis, the the lady who was the lead singer of that, yeah, which yeah, is I very unfortunate. But um, uh, but yeah, so with the operatic style, I feel like it can be very tough to pull off in in this in a genre that's not like opera, you know. So I feel like it's important to have like a, a wonderful like musical score in the background to really showcase, you know, the voice. Um, and it's just fantastic. And, and 
the guitar uh, and the drum, everything just went so well with everything. Uh, like I said, musically and vocally, it's just top notch, folks. These people know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I would say that this is a real sleeper hit. Um, don't let it go under the radar. I, I do recommend um, picking up this album, especially if you're into like um, the old school style Nightwish or anything that's got big production, uh, you know, orchestral productions, um, an operatic voice. It, it's super, super solid album. Um, I do highly recommend it. Um, we already know the King of Pigmen rec yeah. recommends this. To say I the least, yeah. I know he's gonna, uh, I'm sure, get himself a physical copy of, of the disc. Oh, for sure. Um, it's great stuff. This is great stuff. Um, you know, you should probably play some Dead Space uh, while you're playing this album since they're linked, you know. That, yeah, that's get true. The full experience. See, good gamers. <laughs> what can you say? I sing about gaming. He's gonna go <laughs> do some gaming. Well, you, you said at the start that I would... I did it, say that so at the now start. Now I'm just leaning into it. I did so. say that at the start. I wasn't going to say nothing about it. <laughs> He's so modest, too. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, King and Pitman, it was great having you here. Um, hope to, uh, We'll be seeing you again next week um, for a special video. Stay tuned Sorry for that. Me, folks. Um, never apologize. Just own it. Life tip. Again, I told you all I'm full of life tips. Um, never apologize. Just own it. <laughs> Scary. But um, great having you here. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for being on uh, this video. And uh, I'm glad that you enjoyed some good power metal. I always enjoy some good power metal. Uh, thanks for having me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my uh, inclusion this time around, because you will be seeing me again <laughs> next week, so if you don't like me, you know, uh-oh. But thanks again for having me on. Of course. And with all that being said, everybody, Ranger. Ranger. <laughs>